This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Best Bets for Pets. I'm your show host, Michelle Fern. You know, on Best Bets for Pets, we're always about making, you know, your pets happy, your fur babes happy, make the pet parents, you know, looking for great things for your fur babes. And I've come across a product that is like none other because it made Mr. Nikki happy and that rarely happens. We're going to talk more about it and also about their very engaging, unusual and exciting founders. So we'll be right back. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. I'd like to welcome Hannah of Evermore Pet Food. She is the co-founder out with her partner, Allison. Hannah, welcome. Hi, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to have you. And, you know, I didn't know how to describe it when I was talking about you, but you've got me tongue-tied, and that doesn't usually (laughs) happen. And I've done almost 400 shows on Best Bets for Pets because way back I did two shows per episode. So I've had a lot of different types of products. All right. So before we get into talking about your fabulous product, Evermore Pet Food, I read about and then saw about your dog food eating trapeze performance where you're actually eating Evermore Pet Food. What the heck? How did you, and you're really good actually, how did you decide to do this? Tell us about it. Well, when we started the company, I actually was working as a dog walker, a visual artist, and I had this newfound love of trapeze. And we'd already at that point done some dog food eating to get the word out to the world. And I was wondering how we could top that and had the kind of crazy idea that, well, why don't I make the world's first dog food eating trapeze act. And it was very silly. It was just something that we did for fun. And I didn't really think it would get out there in the world. And it really didn't. It's a YouTube video with not a ton of views, but I had a blast doing it. And I had this costume where the whole concept of the act was I was a freshly spayed dog. And I even took an e-collar and incorporated it into the costume and wore it for a little while on the trapeze. And then took a bite of the Evermore and, you know, threw off the cone and did a jubilant trapeze act but yeah it was just it was just something silly and fun to do and i had a lot of fun with it i did not know what to expect when i saw (laughs) it on youtube i thought this is a first i've never seen this before and you know i thought okay maybe a little kitschy but you're actually really good so yeah (laughs) i mean i don't think i can even do a pull-up so kudos to you yeah you were really good is that a side gig still no, no, no. I mean, I was even I was pretty amateur at that point, too. Um, <laughs> I've done a couple of paid performances a very long time ago. My much older shoulders have pretty much decided we're not doing that too much anymore. So uh, mostly grounded these days. But you have your claim to fame out there on YouTube and everyone. You can go <laughs> ahead and watch this. The link is on the Evermore site. And we're going to talk more about Evermore. Evermorepetfood.com. Is that it, Hana? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I thought that okay. was a statement. Was I just question. wanted to confirm. So, <laughs> yes, it everyone, is evermorepetfood.com. Okay, evermorepetfood.com. So, <laughs> let's talk about Evermore. Okay. First, I'm going to talk about this a lot because it shocked me. Nikki is a little Havanese. 
he's my only pooch left. And then I have a household of cats. And he is a crazy dog. He likes to turn his dish over and put the food all over the place every single time. And I've had a lot of different types of food on, you know, Best Bets for Pets over the last 12 years. And he always flips his food dish over. (laughs) He freaking ate this. He loves it. So I was shocked. I was beyond shocked. So first I have to tell you that. That'll probably come up again because it shocked me. So let's talk about what was the goal when you were starting Evermore Pet Food? You know, there's a lot of products out there, you know, that you're getting into a competitive market. What was your idea when you um, and Allison started Evermore? You know, it's a very long story. We didn't really decide to start the company. We kind of fell into it. And if you want to get into that, we can. But in terms of the concept of the food, at the time, there weren't really any gently cooked foods out there. There were a couple that all started at the same time, but there was a real hole in the marketplace. You know, you could have highly processed kibbles, you could have canned food, or at that point, raw had already taken off. But there was nothing in that in-between space. So for us, we saw that real need. And just from the foodies in us, we both, especially Allison, who has really deep knowledge, are passionate about animal welfare and sustainable agriculture. And that's something we weren't really seeing being done in pet food. Just taking these protein sources that honor animal welfare and humane treatment, and they're just the best quality produce possible. And so we really felt that that was a hole there, that people couldn't really feed their pets the way that they should be feeding themselves. You know, speaking of that, There's a big trend right now for plant-based food for pets. I think it's coming more from certain pet parents, and it makes no sense. What is your opinion on that? I know that's a little bit different than your product is not plant-based, and I think that is ideal. Dogs are not meant to eat plant-based food, and cats are really not. What do you think about that trend? You know, we get asked all the time if we're thinking about making a plant-based food? And the answer is always no. Look, we really, really respect kind of that place of where it's coming from about wanting to do better for the environment, wanting to prevent animal suffering. I mean, that's really why we're doing what we're doing the way that we're doing it. But we also have to honor the pets that we actually have. Dogs are carnivores, cats are obligate carnivores. And to sort of shoehorn them into our moral belief systems, just, um, it's just not right. And that's, you know, we feel really strongly about that. I love your answer. I've been kind of somewhat vegetarian at times vegan for years. And when I was vegan, it was way before there was all this plant-based stuff that makes it easy now to eat plant-based. And I'm hoping that there it's more than a trend and people do want to do better for the environment and so forth. But who knows? So tell us, how did you get started? Well, it's kind of a crazy story. I used to be a dog walker in Brooklyn. And my now business partner, Allison, is a health supportive chef. And she's also was one of my clients. And you think that's the story, but that's not the story. Another one of my dog walking clients was this sort of eccentric older woman who had moved to Brooklyn after leaving Tribeca. She lived in Tribeca through 9-11. And like a lot of the people who were there at the time, she just decided to not leave while the neighborhood was covered in rubble. Her dog, who she loved more than anything, developed cancer not long after. Most of the dogs that lived in the neighborhood did. And he was given a six-month prognosis. She was not willing to accept this and did a ton of research and started cooking for her dog. He miraculously lived another six years and she started cooking for other dogs in the neighborhood. She herself was a neighborhood dog walker and a lot of these dogs were thriving. So she sort of had this underground dog food business going that she sort of scaled, but she didn't really have business sense. She was just passionate about the food. So when I was her dog walker, one day she called me in the middle of having a stroke (laughs) And I was like, you call 911? Yeah. So I made her call 911. But basically, I ended up in the situation. She didn't really have any family. She didn't have any kids. She didn't have a husband. It was she was very alone in the world. And I ended up in the situation where I was sort of in this daughter role, where I was kind of entrusted with her life's work and her life. 
And in the meantime, a mutual friend let Allison know that this situation was happening. And we came together to kind of help keep her dog food business going while she was recovering. Because initially, we thought she was going to recover. Long story short, she ended up having another stroke and never saw the outside of a care facility again. Um, It was really, really, really difficult. But we were still making sure everyone got their dog food. We were visiting her in the hospital. She couldn't really speak at that point. And we were like communicating by pointing at letters. Like it was, it was really intense. But this whole time, her former neighbors and her clients were, can we get this dog food? And we just kind of were like, okay, we have to keep this going. And Allison's dog, Connor, who had a bad meal in his life, he was a really healthy raw fed dog, started thriving to the next level on the food. So it became very clear that there was this this product that needed to be in the world. So we got her blessing and had a really steep learning curve, like that AFCO thing that we were talking about. We had no idea. We had to learn everything really fast. We worked with consultants, like the formula was great, but it wasn't nutritionally balanced. Like it was a crash course in how do you legally and responsibly sell dog food to the public? Because that wasn't really what was happening before. But we sort of relaunched under a new name, very much again with her blessing. And a few months later, she passed away. That's how we get started. It was pretty crazy. So this is in a sense, kind of a her legacy in a sense. Exactly. I mean, that's sort of, I mean, and that's part of, you know, the name Evermore means a lot of things to us. But I think partially it has to do with like this continuation. So we're very grateful to her. And it was just one of these synchronistic, we were in the right place in our lives, in the right time, in the right mindset to kind of jump into the unknown. I mean, if we, if, if we knew anything about how difficult this industry and this business would be, we're an independently owned business. We don't have outside financing. We've been bootstrapping the whole time. But if we had any idea of what we were getting into, I don't know that we would have. You know, the best products start that way. Grassroots, and they just, you know, take off. And it was just the right timing. Everything was in the right place. Kind of like, I don't know, this is a little bit out there, but you know how they say that, the universe is ready. This is the time. Things happen for a reason. All of those kind of things. That's what sounds like. That's what happened. I mean, that's totally how it felt felt, and how it still feels. And my partner and I are both very open to that idea that things sort of line up when they're supposed to line up. So yeah, that's the story. Well, that's a great a story. Crazy. You mentioned something when you were talking about um, Evermore just a minute ago about a hole in the market. There's raw food. There's cooked food. What is the difference? I mean, I know the difference. One is cooked. One is raw. But what is the difference as far as in digestion abilities or and palatability for your dog? Sure. You know, I think uh, what raw and cooked share is that they're both minimally processed. Now, When you have a cooked food, it goes through that kill step, you know, where it kills pathogens. Raw foods, commercial companies have their ways of doing this too. But with a cooked food, it's a heat process. We use a very low temperature heat process, but it's still enough to kill pathogens. But what it also does is it sort of helps break down the food a bit. And, you know, through the chemical processes of cooking, um, you know, when heat is, you know, when food is exposed to heat, what it does is it also creates that sort of aromatic experience. So from a flavor and digestion standpoint, there's a lot of dogs that can really benefit from that. Now, if you have a young, healthy dog that's doing great on raw, awesome. Like raw is definitely the more economical option. Now with the cooked foods, we tend to find that dogs do really great on it when they're picky, like your Havanese. Or a lot of times if they're going through something where they have compromised immune systems, if they're experiencing a disease process like cancer, you know, or kidney issues, a lot of times that these situations where you really need something gentle that's easy on the digestive tract and really lets the animal's full energy go towards healing, that's a time when cooked food might be more more indicated. Another difference between most cooked foods and most raw foods is most raw diets are on the 90% meat side of things. They really are not so much including produce and other ingredients, whereas most cooked diets have 60 to 80% 
of, um, you know, that was, it would be where the meat is. And then there's a lot of produce ingredients, at least that's for us. A lot of times with some other companies out there, they will be like four or five produce ingredients and then a whole list of supplements. And we really try to use all of the ingredients that, you know, we have things like dandelion greens and blueberries, and we really use a wide array of ingredients to get the full nutritional needs of an animal dealt with and not rely on a whole bunch of supplements. That was a little convoluted, but um, no, yeah, they're, I mean, you have amazing ingredients. I'm looking at the box right now. Nikki dined on the lamb recipe yesterday, and he still has some left. You know what? Let's take a break, and we'll come back, and you can explain what the AAFCO is. We'll be right back. For those fortunate to have experienced the deep bond and unconditional love of a companion animal, The death that follows can be one of the most difficult and misunderstood losses to go through. Many times, this devastating loss goes unrecognized and trivialized by family and friends, leaving grieving pet parents struggling to find healthy ways to cope with the loss. In And I Love You Still, a thoughtful guide and remembrance journal for healing the loss of a pet, Dr. Julianne Corbin calls attention to the difficulties unique to the loss of a beloved pet and provides an interactive and compassionate guide to help you process your loss and work towards coming to a place of peace and healing. For those interested in journal therapy and looking for a professionally written and compassionate resource to help understand and reconcile the grief associated with the loss of your pet, this book is for you. And I Love You Still, a thoughtful guide and remembrance journal by Julianne Corbin is now available for purchase on Amazon and other major book retailers. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. (laughs) Dot com. Welcome back, everybody. We're speaking with Hannah from Evermore, party food for dogs, which is delicious food. It passed the Mr. Nikki test. And we're talking about the AFFCO, which is what, Hannah? So AFCO is the American Association of Feed Control Officials. And any pet food out there that's sold as pet food, you might notice on the label by the ingredients, it will say there'll be a statement that the food meets AFCO nutritional profiles for either adult maintenance or all life stages or growth and reproduction. There's sort of different parameters. And what AFCO is, and this is very confusing, a lot of people think that AFCO needs to approve foods and they don't. What AFCO is, it's a non-regulatory body that consists of members of like the USDA, the CVM, which is the College of um, Veterinary CVM, CBN. They're associated with the FDA and they do the animal food side of things. Also some industry players. And basically it's this body that comes together and comes up with the recommended nutritional profiles for what constitutes dog food, what constitutes cat food, and any food that is made in the U.S., basically has to conform to these nutritional standards to be considered food. So it's a little bit confusing to consumers. And these profiles have, I mean, it's everything. It's every micronutrient you could think of in terms of what these levels are. So our food meets these numbers, as does any food you should be buying um, that can be sold as food. There are things that say that they're partial diets and those don't meet the full numbers. But What we do that's special to meet these numbers is you'll notice most pet foods have like a couple of ingredients you recognize and a laundry list of supplements. And I mentioned this before, but we actually managed to hit those numbers with real food ingredients. And it's possible. It is possible to get all of the nutrition you need from food. It works for us. It works for our pets. Well said and well explained. Thank you. Let's talk about the best way to introduce Evermore food to your pet. Let's keep in mind, this is might be someone that's using, you know, food from the grocery store, or whatever they're using, maybe a kibble and wet food, maybe they have raw. Well, how would you go about recommending that they introduce Evermore? 
Sure. I think any time that you're transitioning really to any food, it's important to take it nice and slowly. And we generally recommend starting with the food being an eighth to a quarter of the dog's diet to start. You know, you put a little bit in and you take out obviously a commensurate amount of their existing food. If you know that your dog has a cast iron stomach, you know, maybe you can kind of go up to the quarter amount. If your dog is a sensitive guy, then you're going to want to start with just about an eighth of what they would normally be eating. And then you're just going to want to assess and see how they do for a couple of days. When we're dealing with pet food, it's really all about the poop. So monitor your dog's stool. And if they seem to be handling it well, just step it up and add another part of their diet or another eighth of their diet. And you just keep working your way up until it's the full diet if that's where you're going. Now, we know we make a premium product and not everyone uses it as a full diet. Some people just use it as a quarter and eighth of the diet all the time. And you know what? Some fresh food is better than no fresh food. So we encourage people to use our product in whatever way works for their lifestyle. And for some people, that's not even as part of their regular meals at all. Some people use the food as a Kong filler. Kong They'll fill- use it to fill those. <laughs> so there's a lot of different ways that you can introduce the food into your dog's diet without necessarily committing to it being a complete diet. But just a slow transition where you add the food and then remove some of their existing food is definitely the recommended way to do it. Okay. And let's talk about what about, you know, there's so many different dogs out there. You have tiny ones, teacups, you have, you know, all the way to Irish wolfhounds, you have different appetites, weights, everything. What are the sizes available for Evermore? And I know it's delivered frozen. Yeah. So right now we actually work exclusively in one pound units in terms of like the individual packaging. We're actually working on developing a more bulk solution now, but we ship in different increments, starting with our sampler packs that are four pounds, all the way up to what we call our double large case, which is 32 pounds at a time. But we can really customize to ship any amount you want. We offer both a la carte ordering or ordering on a subscription basis. So customers really have the option to be as flexible with it as they want. And we have amazing customer service. I want to give shout out to Erin, who is, we call her um, our customer service ballerina. And she is so good at answering any questions that anyone might have about how much to feed their dogs or which formula might be appropriate for their dogs. So yeah, customers have options in terms of how much they want to buy at a time. We do offer a subscription with free shipping, but we don't force people to sign up for one. A lot of companies out there really don't offer that a la carte option. And we want to make sure that people can purchase the food however they feel comfortable doing so. You know what? I like that you also mentioned that people use it in different ways because Obviously, there's a cost difference in fresh food made with all these wonderful ingredients versus what you're getting in a can. There's a huge quality difference. There's a huge, you know, there's a lot of differences. But, you know, in an ideal world, everyone could afford anything, but that's not how it is. So I really like that you mentioned there's, you know, you can introduce a little, you can use it as a reward with your Kong. Maybe that's the way I can get Nikki moving more. Or, you know... I know that kibble is mostly grain generally, so that's not probably your ideal, but it's, you know, it's okay if the pet parent needs to use it that way. So I applaud you on being open-minded like that. Do you have anything in the works for Evermore for cats? Funny you should mention that. We are actually working on it right now. Um, You know, it's something... We were planning on coming out with a couple of years ago, but the pandemic hit right as we were kind of really getting rolling with the R&D on that. And we kind of had to put it on the back burner to just make sure that we could continue to provide the surface and quantity of food that we, we had been. But now we're full steam ahead on CAT. And we actually just finished what we're hoping is our final test run before we're ready to put out on the market. I hoping, 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 knocking on wood, that it will be ready end of summer, early fall. That's good to hear because my other show is Catitude. So and I always <laughs> well, ask about cats because it seems like 
for most things, dogs are tested first. You know, they're less finicky with eating. There's, you know, a larger variety as far as sizes. I don't know. They play with toys more. You know, they get a lot of advantages. So, oh, totally. I, right? They do. You know? They do. I have two cats and I will let you in on a little secret. They actually eat ever more dog food. So... Oh, they that's... Eat our tur- they eat our turkey formula, which is um, very, very, very close to being a nutritionally complete cat food. And uh, it's just a hair short on thiamine. And my cats eat enough mice, so that's not a problem. Well, that's really good to know because, well, my cats are not too finicky, but they're, uh, some of them are older. So it's just... It's just good to know. As we were talking earlier in the dog world, there's a you know a, a lot of different types of food out there. Like you said, mostly raw. There's not quite as much with cat food. Oh, it's a real hole. Um, a big hole, is, right? There's a it big, is a big hole. They forgot and you know, the cats. All of the, all of the market research, you know, a big part of it is just dog people historically have been willing to spend more, and cats are finicky. So the problem, you know, if you have a dog on your food. The dog is generally going to like that food for life. Um, You know, there are times when they'll get bored or start turning up their nose, but that's that's the exception, not the rule. With cats, they are hardwired for variety in a different way. So it's just much harder to get them to really love something and stay loving it if it's a natural food than it is for dogs. So I think that that's why companies have been slower to jump into that. But it is a shame because they could really benefit so much from a fresh food. I'm sure they could. And, you know, I don't know what cats you're describing, but they're not mine. Mine (laughs) are, they have no problem eating. They've never been finicky. And actually, Mr. Dennis, back in the day, used to eat dog food. He'd rip open the bag. So, you know. Oh, my cats are Hoovers, too. So, like, my, we have a, a couple of other people have been market testing our food. And some of their cats, I'd say about 60%. We have about a 60% success rate. My cats, they will eat anything. They will steal pasta off my plate. So it's strange when they eat the weirdest thing. Like Dennis, I, he's part Maine Coon. So he's like, people told me when way back when I, he found us. That's how I got all my cats are rescues and Nikki. So he is just, a, he's like the, they say the Maine Coons are the dog of cats. So he'll want anything from you, even lettuce. You know, <laughs> he comes and taps you. Where's mine? <laughs> lettuce. What the heck? Lettuce. Lettuce. I mean, okay. So. Let's talk about the most important thing, where to buy, because we mentioned how you buy, but where can they go to buy it? We are primarily a direct consumer product, which means you can go to our website and buy the food at evermorepetfood.com. If you have any questions, you can always, there are so many links to contact us on the website and you can actually even schedule an in-person, like a consultation, phone call, or Zoom session if you are not sick of Zoom yet. But we also do have some amazing retailers all over the place. It's kind of random where they are. We have New York and the Bay Area, which is where we're headquartered. But then we'll have one in like Northern Chicago. We've got one in Florida. We have just uh, smatterings of different stores across the country. We we work directly with the retailers. And if you want to find out if there's a store near you, you can go to the store locator on our website. And if you are a store owner or have a store that you really love going to, you can always reach out and talk about getting a wholesale account set up. Uh, we love working with retailers when it's a good fit. Fabulous. And we'll talk more about the cat's food when that comes out. Well, thank you so much, Hannah, for coming on Best Bets for Pets, telling us about Evermore Pet Food. Thank you for the samples, Nikki loves the food. So I wish you great success and your website again. So everybody can go to your website and try your product is evermorepetfood.com. And thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed this episode of Best Bets for Pets. This is really one of the best foods I have ever tried. I really like the fact that it's, you know, cooked, that the ingredients Please check it out. It's evermorepetfood.com. The ingredients are amazing. And, you know, hey, pass the Nikki test. So I'd like to thank my guest, Mahana from Evermore Pet Food, for coming on Best Bets for Pets. Thank you, Nikki, for being my tester. He absolutely loved it. And I'm sure he didn't mind in the least 
thanks to everybody listening to Best Bets for Pets. I appreciate it so much. And especially thank you so much to my producer, Mark Winter, for making me and my guests sound amazing. Now keep listening. You never know what we're going to have next on Best Bets for Pets. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.